。好啦，將個時間交俾兩位啦。Thank you。Thank you everyone for coming and、uh, really appreciate the time and、uh, thank you Sue Ray for coming all the way from Singapore. Yes, yes, I was very excited to be here. Good to meet everyone. Um, firstly, I spent about 10 minutes talking to Suri about how I'm actually selling my car on Carousel, so I feel like I'm a power user already. So we would love all of you to actually know a little bit more about Carousel, so you can sell your things online. So maybe you could tell us a little bit about what Carousel is all about. Yeah. yeah. So hi everyone. So excited to be here. Good to meet everyone. Can I just get a show of hands again? How many of you actually have used Carousel? Wow! Thank you so much for the support. Like, I think my, some of my team members are here. So for for those of you who haven't, they're going to come to you later to to, to get you to use it.、Um, so so maybe I'll share a little bit more what Carousel is. So Carousel、um, essentially is this app that allows you to sell anything just by taking a photo, putting a title and a price, and uploading for sale in 30 seconds. So very easy. And if you wanted to buy something、um, from the peer-to-peer -peer marketplace, you just go in there, browse for it. And then you just chat with someone who's selling something. Then you just meet up, or you can post the item. It's very social, very fun, very simple. And the idea here is that all of us here has something in our lives that's underutilized that should really go on to benefit someone else. And and we truly believe that、um, each transaction at Carousel is an exchange of stories and meaning and benefits, and everyone should be doing that. So if you haven't, please snap this sale. Thank you very much. Well, I think the first question I want to ask you is about your career. Uh, were you always wanting to be an entrepreneur, or did it happen by accident?、Um, you know, I think growing up in Singapore,、um, it's not very encouraged to do your own thing, right? Like、um, people grow up aspiring to be a, a lawyer, a doctor. You know, profession seemed to be the thing. And then eventually, I went to business school, and you know, people tell you from day one that success is clearing thirteen rounds of Goldman Sachs interview and landing a job as an investment banker or being a McKinsey consultant.、Um, so at some point, you know, the system just tells you that that's the path to success.、Um, and I think for me, it was very fortunately in 2011. I'm so I'm part of this university called National University of Singapore. We have this cool program that sent us to Silicon Valley for one year to be an intern in a technology startup. Um, and that was that one year where you know you just so immersed in technology. Everywhere you go, people are coding and talking about startups. And I think that really opened my eyes to how technology had this opportunity to solve problems, meaningful problems, at a very large scale. And that really piqued my interest and my co-founders' interest. And that changed our lives. So we we came back、um, and decided to learn how to build apps. Eventually, learned how to build an app, solving our own problem. So we have all these old gadgets that we're not using anymore. We joined a hackathon to build that app, and turns out, realized that hundreds of people wanted it after we pitched it after 54 hours, and、um, that gave us the confidence to make our parents very angry and do this full time. I can imagine the、uh, the Asian parents. They definitely only think there's three jobs in the world. Doctor, lawyer, and banker, right? Yep,、so、totally. It's actually a problem that we're looking to solve at Young Founder School, where we're helping high school students become entrepreneurs, as、uh, Suri knows very well. But I guess the the other part of it is funding, right? So one is the support of your parents, which obviously you didn't get initially. But what about the support of the investment community? How how hard was it to raise money when you first started? Yeah, I, I think just now there was a slide saying about how forty two knows. Like that number is real, and it's probably even larger. I probably get so many more no's.、Um, so, so when we started Carousel in 2012, so in May 2012, we had actually moved to this place called Block 71.、Um, you know, for the next 18 months, we had no salaries. We were not funded.、Uh, it was just us and our laptops building the first version of Carousel. So, so funding at that time wasn't. So available, and I think more importantly for us, it was more important to be building a product that resonated with people. So we were much more focused on that.、Um, eventually, I think we were were extremely lucky to have partnered now with really world class investors who supported our vision. So、um, you know, we eventually got our seed round that was supported by Rocket End Ventures, Golden Gate Ventures, 500 startups, and then in you know, a later round, Sequoia Capital, DBS Bank, EDBI supported us. But you know, all that. Good stuff you hear in the news、um, seems like all good news, but the reality of it is, 99% of it is really slogging it through, working through every other issue, getting users, getting a great product,、uh, 
um, you know, solving organizational structure, processes, communication, alignment, all sorts of things. So, so I'd say this whole six and a half year journey, like the only way to describe it is the only easy day was yesterday. Like six and a half years in, like people think that, hey, it must be easier now. You've got a team of 250 people. I was like, hey, actually, I tell them it's my hardest year ever. It doesn't get any easier and I don't expect it to get any easier. Well, okay, let's, let's talk about that because a lot of these fireside chats that I've been to, they always talk about the successes and how great it is to be an entrepreneur. What was like the darkest day where you thought, I'm giving up, I'm done, I'm going to leave this, this is not going to work? Huh. Like a single darkest day. So many dark days in Carousel. <laughs> uh, I, I, when, I, when I relate back to um, the toughest times in Carousel, right? And, and this, I guess, stems from our, our firm belief that, you know, Carousel is nothing without a team. Um, all team members, we've now got 250 people spread across seven offices in the region. All of these people are incredibly smart, passionate, and they can be doing anything else other than Carousel. They can take any other job they wanted to, but they, they are actually working with us. And, and for me, the moments where I feel like are toughest is when I've let my team down, you know, when they're, they're feeling like they can't do their best work. They're not having fun coming to work. And sometimes when you're growing as a startup, like there's so many growing pains, like communication is not great, people are not aligned, and this frustration. Like those are the times when... Um, I feel worst. And there are a few of these critical moments in the company, especially as you change from a 40-person team um, to an 80-person team, like the step change, I mean, it's 80 to 150 and 150 to 250. Each time, like each of these moments were in some ways breaking moments in Carousel. Like, and um, you know, as a result of that, people get unhappy. And I think those were really, really tough times for me. Like when I look back, I'd say those were, were really the darkest times. Yeah. So... You know, as CEO, you get a lot of the limelight, a lot of the spotlight, uh, a lot of the fame. But as you said, like, there's a lot of people behind you that are supporting you. Uh, who would you say are some of the unsung heroes within your team that you're like, man, like, that was such a critical thing that they did at that time? Yeah, totally. Like, um, like you know, I like to joke that the real unsung heroes are everyone else except me because like I'm up here but I'm really just the guy putting up there like you not know, almost like a I don't know I'm just a, a model in a poster right um, and everyone else just doing the really really hard work and and so we, we at, at least for me every day I wake up so grateful for for the team and the hard work that they put in but I, I'd say you know if I have to call out unsung heroes um, in every tech company, uh, you and any company perhaps, and, and I think this is something that's been really instrumental at Carousel, and, and they don't get enough spotlight or credit, is the, the customer experience team. So these are people who get the, bear the brunt of the product releases. You ship out a product that's buggy, 100 tickets come in, angry customers, and you know what? It's our customer support team up there, right? You know, if people go through a bad transaction, it's our team up there. So they, they actually really receive a lot of these challenging um, approaches from customers and whatnot. But all these feedback cycles and loops, um, while so emotionally draining, is so fundamental to the company. So many of our product features have been a result of our customers writing in, complaining, and then it helps us prioritize what the biggest problems are to fix and you know, one of the core values at Carousel is problem solving because we believe absolutely that problem solving leads to innovation and much better products. Um, so this team ultimately is the sole source of truth of how our customers are exper ex experiencing the platform and where we actually need to absolutely improve in. And, and I don't think they get enough credit for it, you know, because it always, it could come across as I'm just replying tickets. So, but I always tell them, and they, you know, they maybe also don't believe me, that they ultimately are one of the most important, or maybe the most important team at Carousel. Well, I, I actually, I want to take that a step further because one of the things we were talking about backstage was, and I, I had to stop myself because I was giving you advice on, hey man, you should like do this with your app, and this is how you could like make more money, and blah, blah, blah. And then I kind of think like, you must get that from every single person that you meet that use a Carousel and the customer support team. So. How do you stay focused on your core mission? Because every day you're getting advice from idiots like me. And you, know, you think, oh, that's a shiny new object. Let's go to e-commerce or let's go do this kind of delivery or whatever. So how do you stay focused every day? 
I, I think it's a privilege, you know, to have a product that is so special wherever you go and people are telling you about the, the problems and the complaints and the bugs. Like, we really appreciate that. It's a suggestion, not a complaint. A suggestions, right? <laughs> you know, like, I think that helps us get more and more data points on where we can improve. And I think that's fundamental to building a great product and service that's enduring. Um, how do we stay focused? I, I think at Carousel, one of the things that we do is we're very anchored by our mission statement. Our mission statement at Carousel is to inspire every person in the world to start selling and buying so we can make more possible for people, right? So this mission statement essentially drives every action, decision that you know, comes across our desk. And um, we have a bunch of values at Carousel that also anchors us. But you know, operationally, we, we also use OKR systems. We have a planning cycle that talks about what our three to five year goal is, and then we have a 2019 plan, and then from there we cascade it down to different teams and different squads and they own outcomes. So I think one of the organizational hacks that we've implemented in the past two years is really decentralizing decision making. So like, you know, you imagine like a founder CEO, I make every decision, like ultimately, I like to make almost no decisions, um, except for setting up the direction for the year. And then the next level, teams and the squad owners and the business owners should be the ones running like mini startups within the company. So we have different streams like our advertising business. I like the owner to go there, you know, run. Um, basically, they're, they're operating based on outcomes. And, and we really want them to be delivering against those numbers and be very nimble in iterating their plans. So we have our ads team, we have our growth team, we have our cars and property teams. Each of them have owners and each of them are like, like mini startup CEOs. Um, and with that, like, we look at the data and we're trying to prioritize from there. Uh, but ultimately, we're just guided by a mission. And I think that is ultimately beyond any other management structure or planning tool and whatnot. Like if everyone internalizes the mission, that very quickly helps guide what you should be doing. Yeah. Got it. So we have uh, quite a lot of young entrepreneurs. In fact, we got some kids from our, our Young Founder School program as well in the audience. Maybe you could give us some words of advice for, for them as you were... Uh, Thinking back to when you were young, which was like 10 seconds ago, uh, what would you say to these kids back then? Yeah, not so young anymore. Like, uh, time flies. I've been doing this almost seven years now um, since we graduated. Um, you know, I, I think this, you probably hear this so much, but, but I, I still think it's important. Um, if you're on to doing your own startup, you're aspiring to do your own startup, make sure you're not doing it because it's cool, it's going to make you a lot of money. I promise you, it's, it's not a... Uh, get-rich-quick scheme at all. It's going to be extremely hard. You're going to run into problems, like I was saying, every single day. I, I, it's like a brand new thing that I never thought I... You, know, you don't know what you don't know. And, and I think the only reason why you keep going is because you're so anchored by a purpose and a passion for a problem that you're solving. Like for us, we just care so deeply about this mission that we're solving, this problem that we're solving. And... You know, when I look back, all the t pivotal points, the difficult challenges, like it was this purpose of solving problems for people, inspiring people to start selling that made us take our next step. And, you know, fast forward seven years, it's been seven years. And uh, we hope to be doing this for the next 10, 20 years, just because it's a very large mission. It's something we absolutely care about. And uh, we're having so much fun doing it. So I, I think that's one very important advice, right? Just be anchored by a purpose and a passion for a problem that you're solving. And maybe the second one is, um, you know, some of these events um, and, and speakers are cool. You learn a bunch of things and we've, I've learned a lot from all these speakers. But, you know, one of the things is no one knows better than yourself about the problem that you're going to solve. Because you learn so much from interacting with your customers and your users. You know best. Um, at some point, it's much better for you to take the next step, ship the next product feature, learn very quickly, iterate. Um, and you know, take every other advice as data points. And um, you know, just trust your heart, follow your gut. OK, well, before we go, I'm going to ask you a surprise question, which is, what is the favorite app on your phone that's not Carousel? Wow. Trick question. You know, like, um, one of the things that we use at, with Carousel is this app called Slack. Um, it's, I don't know whether it's my favorite app, like, but, uh, <laughs> because we're, we're always on it. Like, it's always bustling of activity, but it's my way of staying connected with the team. And, and um, it's more than just work. You see the funny things happening across offices, uh, which is why it's such a joy to, to open it every day. It's, uh, 
always a celebration, um, always some funny meme out there, funny gif. Uh, yeah, so, so I guess Slack is an a indispensable tool. Well, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you very coming. much. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much.